In July of 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, the world's third longest suspension bridge at the time, is built spanning the Tacoma Narrows in the U.S. state of Washington. And on November 7, 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, once called the most beautiful bridge in the world, helplessly collapses in just four months after opening to traffic. The collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was a major incident caused by the aeroelastic features of the bridge, but the exact process of the collapse has still yet to be uncovered. However, it has been reported that a development in the motion of the bridge from vertical vibration to torsional vibration led to the collapse. In the second half of 2020, Professor Hei Chen Choi's team at Seoul National University's Department of Mechanical Engineering and KISTI researchers conducted a study that reenacted the entire process of the collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. In 1940, the study was conducted by analyzing the vibrations of the bridge caused by wind along with the collapse mechanism by creating the closest conditions to the actual collapse using the supercomputer Nurion. The flow in such conditions falls under the turbulent flow regime. Turbulent flow refers to fluid motion characterized by chaotic and irregular flow of air or water, and it typically occurs at high speed. An easy example of a turbulent flow would be the reason why smoke coming out of a chimney disperses instead of uniformly ascending. Turbulent flow typically occurs at high Reynolds numbers. The Reynolds number gives the ratio of an object's inertia to its viscosity, and it is one of the more important dimensionless numbers that represents fluid flow patterns. Also, the revolution of flow in a turbulent regime is referred to as a vortex, which can cause vibration and instability in structures when interacting with them. The Reynolds number during the actual collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was around 3 million, which is considered a high Reynolds number. The number of grid points required for analysis is related to the Reynolds number. But if you were to use the actual Reynolds number at the time of the collapse, computational capacity of a size that is impossible for practical analysis would be required. Therefore, computations were performed by changing the Reynolds number to 10,000 to enable practical computations while also sufficiently simulating the phenomena that occurred in the actual bridge. The fluid flow is analyzed by constructing the grid system in a three-dimensional space. While more than 13 billion grids and 2,500 nodes in the supercomputer Nurian were used for this simulation. The length and geometry of the approximately 850 meter bridge were used exactly as they were in 1940. The stationary bridge slowly begins to sway due to aeroelastic interaction with the wind. These are vertical vibration of the same frequency and wavelength that occurred on the morning of the collapse. Through the computation results, we were able to check the flow of air around the bridge, the force acting on the bridge, and the three-dimensional flow structure together with the motion of the bridge. This time, we look at the motion of the bridge from the front. You can clearly see the cross-sections of the bridge vibrating vertically. If you look at the cross-section of the bridge and the two-dimensional flow field, you can see how vortices periodically occur above and below the bridge, and how the bridge sways accordingly. We will now separate the flow field and the bridge structure. By doing so, you can see that the wavelength of the bridge within the entire flow field is one-fifth of the bridge's length, and that the simulation results appear exactly like the actual phenomenon. Next are the severe torsional vibration, which acted as the direct cause of the collapse of the bridge. Such torsional vibration follows the preceding vertical vibration without any artificial conditions. We were able to confirm that pressure change caused by the flow led to torsion in the bridge and that the torsion and pressure change amplify each other over time. But looking at it from the front, you can just tell how dangerous the severe torsion on the verge of the collapse must have been. 
Now we look at the cross section of the bridge. You can tell that considerable back and forth torsion is occurring in the cross section of the bridge just as it did in the actual incident. Furthermore, you can see the vortex structure shed sequentially from the leading edge of the bridge section. According to the computations, we were able to confirm that the torsional amplitude increased due to the flow continuously exerting energy on the bridge. While existing computations could only view the torsional vibration in two dimensions, we were able to view all the angles of twist of the bridge's cross section in three dimensions. Accordingly, we were able to find the torsional vibration of the bridge all looks different depending on the 3D direction. By means of this study, we were not only the first in the world to reenact the entire process of the collapse of the U.S. Tacoma Narrows Bridge using Kisti's fifth supercomputer Nuri, we were also able to actualize vibrations on a realistic scale using a 3D simulation. Moreover, we achieved great results in that we improved the academic understanding of wind-induced vibrations and collapsing of bridges, and that we are also equipped with a system that can be applied to respond to similar problems such as wind power, aircrafts, and expanding bridge collapse prediction systems. Takoma Dari Bunge is a supercomputer of 16,000 core, and the world's highest level of research.